Hey everyone, uh, Aaron Albers here. So I want to talk about Ukraine for a few, a uh, couple of minutes if you indulge me. Now, I know everyone is, there's a lot of split decisions in America, especially on social media about supporting Ukraine, not supporting Ukraine, giving us them all these weapons, all this ammo, all that, all the, that. And as someone who served, I served in the United States Marine Corps, uh, 9-11 veteran. I was there when, you know, we were, my Marine Expeditionary Unit was the first ones in the Pakistan to an airfield, invasion of Iraq, Haiti, Iraq again. So I got the experience. Um, I want to talk about this because there's a lot of controversy going on. And especially coming from people like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, you know, some other folks on social media, such as maybe Megyn Kelly a little bit. But I want to talk about what's going on in Ukraine with this counteroffensive. Now, I'm going to pull in a little historical context here. When Ukraine started this counteroffensive, they were hoping to achieve this really big breakthrough, you know, like they had in Akursa in the Kharkiv region where they had such huge success before. And they had, they went overseas, you know, here in the United States, England, fr uh, France, Germany, Spain, and all that. Learned, got all this equipment, all this high-tech stuff. Learned all these tactics, especially with the pole and all that. And they got all this equipment, and they were trying to do this. And they were trying to achieve this breakthrough. Well, the difference between the Kharkiv and the Kherson counteroffensive is that there was really no real prepared defensive lines in those regions like there is in, I, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the region they're currently fighting in. I know it's the Donetsk and Zafir region. I'm pretty sure I butchered that, so I'll move on. And everyone knew, even the Russians, they weren't stupid, and everyone knew that this current counteroffensive knew where it was gonna be happening. They knew where it was coming from, gonna be coming from around Bakhmut, you know, around the area, the old blast where the nuclear power plant is. So everyone knew where it was coming from. The Russians had time to prepare defenses. They had time to back it up, pre-site everything with artillery, air, and all that. And they had time to basically put everything they needed to prepare those areas very well, which they are doing. They're not, they're getting, they're losing ground, but they're making the Ukrainians cost ground. Now, Ukrainians are doing this in the initial assault and they said, okay, we're not achieving a breakthrough. They stepped back and they went back to basically started interdicting, you know, things like supply nodes, logistic hubs and all that, which was really smart. They really backed off. But I'm getting ahead, uh, a little bit lost in my thoughts here. But so because of this and this failure to achieve a break breakthrough, everyone said, oh, Ukraine didn't do it you know, what they were going to promise they do, and, you know, we got to stop sending them this equipment and negotiate a peace settlement. Well, I want to bring up a couple of historical contexts. Then I'll apply it here. One, it took over a month from June 6th to Operation Cobra, which happened in mid-July of 1944. It was over, it was literally almost six weeks from the time the Allies landed on, on the beaches of Normandy until the time they had their breakout from the hedgerow country in Normandy, where they could be able to get past these defenses, where which the Germans used to extreme effectiveness. If you don't know what I'm talking about, open up a history book, okay? Hedgerows were like many, were fields with high hedges, on top of these big pounds of dirt, and the Germans were able to use them to a great effectiveness as mini fortresses, and it caused the Allies dearly trying to fight through it, especially the Americans around San Lo. It cost thousands of men, tanks, equipment, all that. <laughs> and the only reason that the Allies were able to break out of this is because they changed up their tactics. 
okay? They weren't trying to take. What they did was they start, what they were doing before the Normandy invasion, basically started taking down German supply areas. And this is what they were doing before the invasion. This is what they were doing after the invasion. But right before Operation Cobra kicked off, they were able to continuously affect that and basically pound the German area. They launched a bombing raid, which killed, which had friendly fire, killed some Allied troops in the area. But they were able to break out after that bombing raid, break through the German defenses, which just had these big gaps in it, and get out of the hedgerows and into the flak, where it was basically easier train to maneuver and get around German fortifications. That's my first example right there. Okay? My second example, Operation Desert Storm. I know there's plenty of Desert Storm vets that watch social media and are following this along exactly. Okay? Again, history. Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. United States and the coalition partners went into Saudi Arabia and set up this huge mess of troops to try to force Saddam back diplomatically. It didn't work. Okay? So Saddam, using Soviet-style tactics back in the day, set up this defensive line in and around Kuwait. All right? This was a huge line of trenches, fortifications, pre-site artillery, minefields, and so on and so forth. And everyone thought, including Saddam Hussein, it was going to be a frontal attack and they were going to be able to cause a huge amount of casualties. Now, Norman Shortchagoff, God rest Norman Norman, historical man, fought in Vietnam, the reason why he was in Central Command, he knew this. So they developed a plan. They achieved air superiority in the first days of the war. Then they started attacking the logistics and supply hubs of Saddam Hussein's army. And they started pounding these guys. They started pounding, you know, the fortifications in and around Kuwait. Basically, started causing mass surrender. Then what did they do? They, instead of attacking straight on and bre breaking through, which they did, and started causing mass surrender because these guys have been under artillery fire and air attack and all that sort of things for six weeks. They started surrendering mass. So they launched their their attack sooner out in, the, out in the western part of the desert with the big great hook, the left hook as it were. And this is where it slammed into the flank of the Iraqi army in Kuwait and basically defeated the Republican Guard at 73 Easting. All right, that's my second historical content. Let's look at this, okay? Ukraine don't have air superiority yet, all right? They're basically fighting the Russians with the Russian-style equipment in the air, okay? They don't have air superiority. They can't protect their troops over the battlefield because they don't have the fighters and the fighter aircraft necessary to do that. What they are doing is what we've been doing for decades in the United States military and our allies. They're targeting the logistic hub, wearing down the enemy. This is why we sent cluster munitions to clear out these fortifications such as in the trenches, dug in, artil dug in tanks and all that. There will be a breakout by the Ukrainians somewhere in these two oblasts, these two regions where they're currently conducting the offensive. It's gonna take time. Remember, like I said, it took over a month for the Allies to break out of Normandy. It took six weeks of air campaigns, of an air campaign in Desert Storm before we even launched a ground attack in, in the Kuwait and with the left hook. So Ukraine thought they were gonna achieve that. They didn't. They stopped their, they literally oh, held back their counteroffensive. They took in their damage equipment, get, gonna get back that, get those repaired. Now they're doing, they changed their tactics and doing what they're doing now, which is interdicting, wearing down the enemy. They're going to try to make the same decisions, smart decisions that we made during those two conflicts. All right. So I just want to say thank you for staying with me during this entire situation. And I hope uh, Ukraine is effective. Now, for those that are worried about this, our... Uh, Continuing supply in Ukraine. Like I said, open up a history book. Before we were involved in World War II, before we were involved in World War I, what did we do as a country? 
we supplied the Allies with weapons, ammo, and equipment. Okay? We gave tons of this stuff to Britain and the Allied powers before we became involved in either conflict. So, I'm sorry, Tucker Carlson. I'm sorry, Lauren Ingram. I'm sorry, Sean Hannity. Heck, I'm even sorry, sorry Megyn Kelly. Open up a damn history book. We did it before. We're doing it now. And in the future, I guarantee we'll probably end up doing it again. All right? So, I have a good day, everyone. And long live Ukraine.